Elon Reeve Musk once again made headlines when he proposed the idea to nuke Mars in order to make the planet a more habitable place for humans. He is one of the most influential beings of the 21st century and is often called the father of modern day technology. The real life Tony Stark with his unique ideas and creativity revolutionizes and redefines every area or field he sets foot into. It is no secret that his unorthodox and unscientific stances have long been a subject of criticism. It is well known that Mars has long been on the wish list of this business magnate and billionaire entrepreneur. But nuking an entire planet for the purpose of creating life sounds bizarre, and most people would argue that it's one of his most outlandish ideas yet. But what if Musk's inventive approach might be our only shot at interplanetary colonization? Musk is the founder, CEO and chief engineer of SpaceX, a company he created with the intention to reduce space transportation costs and make interplanetary space travel easy and efficient. One of his long-term goals has been to make colonization on Mars a possibility for human beings as he strongly believes that the red planet holds a lot of potential to become a livable space for mankind. Mars, however, is a cold, desolate planet with a very thin and atmosphere. The temperature there is much lower than that of Earth because of the presence of several frozen ice caps. Although the use of nuclear weapons may seem a little aggressive, but Musk's plan isn't all that bad. By detonating nukes on Mars's poles, the ice caps would evaporate, releasing substantial quantities of water vapors and CO2 into the Martian atmosphere. The explosions will create a runaway greenhouse effect that would heat up Martian rocks, causing them to produce more CO2, thus generating more heat and more CO2, and so on. Increase in the greenhouse gases would ultimately cause a rise in temperature, making it similar to that of Earth. Although this concept of terraforming Mars to make it a habitable place for us humans is extremely inventive, it does come with several flaws. Firstly, if Musk is indeed serious about his intentions to nuke the Red planet, he will have to overcome tons of skepticism and convince people in power that his idea might actually be worth it. Scientists as well as exploration advocates argue that humans have no right to transform another world with its own unique environment and adapted life solely for their own benefit. Is mankind even powerful enough to alter an entire planet to their needs? Second, in theory, the concept to bomb an entire planet would require require an astronomical number of nuclear devices. It is estimated that more than 10,000 of the world's largest nuclear warheads would be required to pull this move off successfully. Currently, the world only has a stockpile of some 13,000 nuclear weapons, and even if bombs were somehow arranged, transporting them to Mars would be another struggle of its own. The third important thing to consider is that using these many heavy nuclear weapons comes at several risks, one of them being the chance to create a nuclear winter on Mars. Any explosion causes dust and debris to be released into the surrounding atmosphere, and with these many strong explosions coupled with Mars's high wind speed, the dust that would be kicked into the air could potentially block out the sun. With a massive drop in the temperature on the planet's surface, and as all the water gradually freezes, the greenhouse gases that were initially produced are bound to become reabsorbed. This would cause the plan to backfire and would leave Mars colder than when we started. Radiation is another factor that could negatively affect the plan to terraform Mars. The red planet has no magnetic field of its own or an ozone layer. This means that there are no barriers between the killer radiation of the sun and the surface. Since the amount of UV and cosmic radiation on Mars is far greater than Earth, the surface already has radiation levels that aren't safe for human habitation. Using nukes to bomb the planet makes this situation 10 times worse because it increases the levels of radiation to a point that can be catastrophically high. The radioactive fallout is bound to cover the entire land, effectively poisoning the water, soil and air, making it difficult for the survival of any and all forms of life. But the problems don't just end there. As mentioned, 
Mars does not have a magnetic field of its own. Not only does this contribute to low gravity on the planet, but the lack of a magnetosphere means that the Sun breaks down the Martian atmosphere at an alarming rate. So even if terraforming was successful, it wouldn't necessarily be a long-term solution, and Mars wouldn't be habitable for long. The strong solar winds would strip away the atmosphere and water vapour as time passes, ultimately causing the planet to return to its initial state. Last but certainly not least, another enormous loophole in Musk's plan is the fact that recent studies have indicated that there isn't CO2 in the poles to create any significant climate change that would trigger a runaway greenhouse effect. Moreover, whatever little water vapour and gas that would be produced after the explosions would eventually condense out of the atmosphere or be lost to space. In simpler words, Mars doesn't have the resources to terraform itself or the ability to maintain its state. To keep it habitable, it would have to be bombed time and time again, which isn't all that feasible and would cause more harm than good. The point here that Elon Musk seems to have missed is that warming up the red planet isn't the only thing needed to make colonization possible. While dropping a big bomb seems to fix the temperature, it adds to other problems, like the increasing toxicity of the atmosphere. To make Mars even remotely Earth-like, not only do we have to introduce oxygen and increase the volume of water, but also reduce levels of soil toxicity and cosmic radiation. An alternative way also has to be discovered that would allow us to stop and maintain the new denser atmosphere of the planet from being blown away by solar winds. So no, detonating nuclear weapons on Mars might not be the best possible idea, but at least it got us talking about Musk's plan. And that is where the true fun lies. Indeed, the concept of making mankind an interplanetary species and inhabiting Mars is one of a kind. It sparks enthusiasm and excitement and gives us hope for the future for us human beings. But does our gain justify wiping out an entire planet and all its life just to create a new home for us? There is a significant possibility that the planet had its own population of indigenous organisms, even if the species on Mars are just small single-celled organisms, is it really worth destroying all of it in the quest to fulfil man's greed and hunger for more land? Either way, Musk is adamant on making Mars a second planet for humans, and if his base succeeds in the future, he would become the Martian's founding father and indeed rule the red planet with an iron fist.